in the heat of battle. A single moment may fill an eternity. And in the blink of an eye, an eternity passes, and the battle is won or lost. I just want to state one thing that I saw there. Get over here! You know what I just realized? I think... Did you, did you, did anyone else just notice that? We, we it's the mountain from Game of Thrones! Must. How much should they pay him to get in here? We are the damned! We are Legion! I need to put a seizure warning on this. In the Legion League, you'll discover timeless monoliths. When activated, they reveal a frozen battle between two armies from Rayclast's past. Break open the monsters. This right here is an interesting design I want to talk about because we've had so many, so many leagues where um, I always say that I really like, like for example, like Breach League. Breach was one of my favorite leagues. Breach was my second 100, I think I had. Um, but even as a person who really loved Breach League, there is one big downside to Breach League, and it's an unpopular opinion, but it's something that kind of means a lot to me, where if you're a new player and you're trying to progress through maps and you roll this really juicy map and you've got, you know, an average build, you're not that good of a player, you don't watch Twitch TV, you don't look at Rise QT speed runs, you have no clue who Zizarian, you know, Ziz is, um, it just in general, like you don't have this knowledge and information. So when you open this breach and you get swarmed by mobs and density and you just die in the blink of an eye, that's not something that's uncommon. And I kind of don't like that, but this league takes a different approach on that and allows you to basically summon whatever you want from this so we'll talk we'll hear it more here doesn't chests with the most valuable rewards before the time runs out be careful which monsters you free as the most rewarding are also the most dangerous journey to the domain of timeless conflict where the eternal battle between the legions and their generals rages Path of Exile Legion also contains an extensive rework of melee combat. We've made all movement skills start instantly, added animation cancelling, made all skills draw their ranges correctly, changed all melee skills to be able to hit multiple adjacent enemies, and fixed up damage timing, ranges, and shapes across all attacks. Instant speed movement and defensive skills now let you respond to incoming attacks effectively. We've also overhauled the animation system to support chaining attacks together and better attack signaling. And we've also improved targeting, attack queuing, and hit feedback. In addition, we've extensively rebalanced all melee skills, melee ascendancy classes, added more defense. So I want to I want to show something that a lot of people don't realize as well in Path of Exile. There's so many times when you play this game. At least if you're okay. So so there's a difference between a casual ARPG player and a guy who's like a diehard ARPG fan wants to min max, wants to go, you know, do all of go the extra mile. So the thing is here is if you notice. So you see how this pack is kind of formed? You could, for example, you can see he's using cleave. He could attack like right here and hit like these first four mobs. He could go in towards here and hit. He could use a mobility skill like leap slam or whirling blades, which has that short delay on it where he may get attacked by like the blue mob. But no, instead, you know what he can do now? He can use this fucking dash, which helps group the monsters up as you can see, and then turn around with no delay, no delay, 
don't even get hit by a white mob there is no animation and then he can just start like attacking and this is so good not just for melee but for just the general of path of exile being able to group up monsters and not feel like you're getting fucked you know like for example previously if you had bad attack speed slash bad movement speed and you use leap slam like that wouldn't happen you would be surrounded or you would have to jump really far away same thing with whirling blades uh flame dash works really well but at the same time not everyone's a caster and forcing everyone to use the same mobility skill is not really very nice you know so this is this is like a nice clean way and if you look he used his mobility skill it's 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 back up already it's already up it's like nothing right and another thing that people don't realize is the way i don't know if they changed this but the way mobility skills used to work was the following you would use leap slam so you so say you're standing here and you use leap slam and you land here right your hitbox in leap slam does not travel it doesn't go like this your hitbox is you're standing here until you land and then you're here which means when you're here and you're jumping through the air you're actually standing still for that whole animation and monsters can attack you at this point that's why you see a lot of players think they desync when they die while they're jumping like if you if there's bears here and you jump out and they explode your your corpse will rubber band back but it's actually not desync it's because of the way it's coded you're actually stuck at that location having instant mobility skills may not 100 percent fix it but the fact that it's instant is a huge step in the right direction. We've extensively rebalanced all melee skills, melee ascendancy classes, added more defensive options for melee, removed the- And there's, let me show you that example right there. If you've ever leap slammed with an acceleration shrine, melee ascendancy classes, added more defense. Right here, watch watch his leap slam animation. If you've ever leap slammed with an, with an acceleration shrine, because you have so much attack speed, your character looks like they're sliding. This is actually just an instant animation. So I'm gonna slow this down to show you guys what exactly I mean. Oopsies. Professional YouTuber here, by the way. So check this out. Just watch, watch this speed. See that? There is no, there's no delay. It was in, it was just that jump was instantaneous. Added more defensive options. See, there's also no delay on landing. Remember that slide? Look at the slide I was talking about. Melee. Remove the cap on chance to hit and have made mechanical changes to certain skills like Cyclone, which is now a channeled skill. With all the melee combat improvements, we wanted players to be able to respond to monster attacks more easily. So we decided to rebalance many older monster skills, improving their signaling and giving the player the ability to dodge their attacks. You can check out Path of Exile Legion on June the 7th. Pretty happy, man. A lot of people, a lot of new players really just always look toward like the new content. As a person who's been playing this game since like their original alpha, it's not that I'm not excited by their new content, I always am. But for me, for the replayability, it's not just new content, it's mechanical changes to the core game that will make everything I play feel better and make me want to play it. So that's, you know, I, I know I say this a lot, but Ever since Abyss League, I was kind of losing my hype towards Path of Exile because it was just constant power creep, power creep, one shot, power creep, power creep, get one shot, power creep, pa power creep, die to on death effects. But this actual core game change, I don't know if you know this, but Synthesis actually introduced one of the best changes, actually, even though I didn't really play it, but uh, Synthesis made it so damage is not snapshotted anymore. So previously, if a Roa charged you, say a Roa is over here and you're playing an EQ Jug and you've got zero endurance charges and the Roa says, hey kid, you got zero endurance charges, charge. So the Roa is charging at you. So you're like, shit, there's a mob flying at me. Now this happens a lot quicker in maps, but in general, there's a mob flying at me. So you hit your Enduring Cry, you roll that chance to get max, all of a sudden you pop to nine Endurance Charges, you hit a Basalt Flask, you're probably at like 65% physical mitigation. Since that Roa originally targeted you and used its skill, it basically rolls its dice against your armor and your defensive mechanics, which is zero at the time. So even though you have all of these buffs on, it will hit you for the true damage it stated at the beginning. 
In synthesis, they redid that code and made it so damage is not snapshot anymore. It, it applies to what you have. So if Vol is channeling a slam, right, and you hit a granite and a basalt flask, it will work. Before, the second he readied his slam animation, it was already done. The damage was already pre-calculated. And if you don't believe me about this, or if, you know, I know some people like to kind of poke it a little bit. If you have ever seen people die with a divine shrine on them, which makes you immortal, this is why. Because they would click the, they would run through the pack of monsters and click the divine shrine, which makes them invulnerable. But all of the damage was registered before they were invulnerable. So they pick it up, the hits attack, or hits uh, actually connect and hit them, then they take the damage and then they die with an invulnerable buff on. So that was the best change, in my opinion, that happened with Synthesis. And now adding instant mobility skills to every single class starting from level four allows you to really avoid it. So that's what I'm really excited about. Okay, so let's take a look and keep on going. Actually, yeah, can someone link me? Can someone link me from the chat the five minute video uh, on Rise's channel? We're gonna, I'm gonna pop up another video here because it's very, it's a very informative video. And if you wanna check it out, it's on Rise's channel. It's also hosted on the Bayclast, um, which is on Tarky's channel. So if you wanna check that out, you guys are more than welcome to. I'll post this in the description down below. Jonathan has prepared something very special. So uh, to explain this now, this is the uh, podcast with Tarky Cat. I'm going to be role playing as Tarky Cat right here. If you want to see his beautiful face, it's right there. Um, I lived in London for a week, so actually three months. So, you know, I feel I can definitely fit the accent. <clears throat> so this is Jonathan Rogers, who's uh, working on GGG side. He's one of the, I don't know exactly what his core role is, but he's going to now explain some of the mechanics. I couldn't explain as in depth since I don't work for GGG. Now, none of us have seen anything that he's shown us, and this is all very early build stuff. So if anything goes wrong, then it's completely fine, and don't worry. Uh, in POE now, obviously, you know, you can do, you can do an attack. But if you start the attack now, you can then just cancel right out of it. Um, if, 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 it's, if it's before the contact point, in which case, like, you, you barely anything happens. As an animation finishes, my character can kind of move immediately as soon as the, as soon as the damage has been done. Um, and that actually changes the feel of combat um, quite a lot. So it's, like, quite a significant change. Um, as well made it so that all movement skills are now instant. Um, so that's obviously another big one. Um, what I'm going to do is um, we've actually also added a bunch of low-level skills because we wanted to, um, so I'm just going to go, uh, skill. so this skill here is called uh, Dash, which is like the lowest level movement skill. You get it at level four. Uh, and this skill, as soon as I press the button, um, I'm just instantly dashing uh, um, across the place. And once again, you can, I can be in the middle of an attack, like even if I'm in the middle of like doing a double strike or whatever, I can just quickly, you know, like move out of the way at any time. Um, so that uh, movement skill is now completely override, um, like anything, even the, uh, except for stun, unless you have been stunned. Um, why am I on fire right now? That looks a bit weird. It's like, you know, the, <laughs> <laughs> the cat balls got the, you. The bug here, but uh, anyway. Um, um, and so this low level movement skill here, basically it's not designed as a sort of traveling skill. So it's got like a, a small cooldown on it. Um, but you can use that to, um, yeah, to, get, to get out of combat. So this is what Leap Slam looks like now that it's instant. Oh, sorry, that was not Leap Slam. <laughs> That's what Leap Slam looks like now that it's instant. But what we didn't want to do is have it so that Leap Slam... Um, we want it to be instant when you're using it to get away, but we didn't want Leap Slam to be instant when you're just doing it again. So what we actually did is we made it so that um, if you Leap Slam repeatedly, you get you still get the old animations that you did before, and the timing is exactly like what it is. But if you Leap Slam, um, not having Leap Slam for a, a little while... Sorry, I'm not a uh, If you Leap Slam without having Leap Slam for a little while, then it is instant like that. So if I'm just holding down the mouse here, I'm not, I'm not letting go at all. And I'm successfully attacking this entire pack of monsters without um, having to let go of the mouse, um, which is actually something that um, awesome. we didn't have before. One thing I'd like to that you might not have noticed is that actually every melee attack now um, can hit multiple enemies. So if you've got multiple guys, in front of you, um, I can hit I hit all of them with a single with a single strike. Um, so basically, what, whatever it looks like you should hit with your swing um, is what you actually hit. So now you can see. Oh larger. my god. Yeah, yeah. So, well, like, it actually, yeah. okay. So, the other thing, of course, Cyclone now channeled. Um, so, I just let go when I want to stop. Um, and the other thing, as well, is it's got different speeds. So, if I move the mouse really close, I move really slowly. If I move onto it, I actually stop. And then, if I move further away, I go faster. Um, so, that actually feels really nice. You can nice. see how happy he is. He's got um, a big smile so on his face. Now, we actually, like, every, every attack has got, like, a damage range like this. And um, one thing we really uh, did was we made sure to get the timing on everything correct. So, as you're swinging through guys, um, 
you can see that the it's um, not instant it actually travels yeah, through it's not like an instant point there's, there's actually like a a, a, a a sort of period where like it actually goes through the guys um and um so this was like a system that we were changing over to and the thing is that actually we also do the same thing on monsters like if i open hillock here um let me just find hillock um so it's like pullback for the punch is like way slower but the part is the same is the, is the same duration as before um let me just uh do some damage to him to get his full sword out it's easier to see with that um, okay what's going on here why is why has he got that that pretty much covers the most of it the gist of it mainly what i wanted to show you guys was the actual rework and how they have designed it uh, for the most part he just keeps on showing animations of how you can dodge out of a lot of the earlier bosses they have much more telegraphed attacks not telegraphed like you can see it on the floor but telegraphed like you can see the punch wind up um you know some some bosses have like a highlighted weapon so you can kind of like see what they're doing uh, yeah he spawned uber hillock which is pretty funny uh but now we're gonna go over and actually continue the actual legion content so I've briefly looked at this. I've only kind of went over it in my spare time. I haven't really done too much on it. So let's get into it. Start reading a little bit. And uh, I'm still a little bit sick, so I apologize. Here we go. <clears throat> Trapped for thousands of years in the domain of timeless conflict, the mightiest leaders of Ray class history have been fighting an eternal war. In Path of Exile Legion, you will free their legions. I have a question. Do you guys remember when Diablo 3 had the Necromancer release, and then PoE had the 10x, and now there was World of Warcraft Legion, and now we're getting PoE Legion? Are they are they kind of button heads of Blizzard here? Uh, you will free their legions from the endless battle and defeat them in combat to earn their valuable rewards. Uh, Path of Exile's June expansion contains the Legion Challenge League, new items, new gems, a game-wide overhaul of melee combat, and much, much more. Timeless Monoliths. So this was shown in the video. As you explore Ray class in the Legion League, you'll discover monoliths. Tag these to reveal an ancient conflict between multiple legions frozen in time. Untether monsters by dealing damage to them, but be prepared to fight those monsters when the effects of the monolith wears off. Now, uh, we've talked about this a little bit in the chat. We're um, kind of have to be a little, not careful, but we're a little confused on how exactly everything is going to work. So... Um, you know, naturally with attack skills, it's really obvious. You click an attack, it goes and hits the monster. How is minion AI going to work on this? Are the minions going to be dumb and they're all just going to hit one target? Maybe you just have to like scale your minion damage so it's good so they just go through and blow everything up. How is like automatic targeting skills going to work like Winter Orb or etc. So this is something that I expect to be fine-tuned as we go into the league. So if you're going to play something where you're not really sure how the interaction works, you may want to wait because GG is known for, you know, those simple little things that may seem obvious to us. They kind of fuck up sometimes. So that's one thing to keep into account. The domain of the timeless conflict. Enemies from each of the five legions uh, drop some splinters, which combine together to form an emblem of that legion. Um, so splinters is a, a spooky word for me. I hope they don't drop like Pirandus coins, like one, 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 one. I hope that they can learn to stack them over time because um, they ended up doing that with Pirandus coins later. Which combine together to form an emblem of that legion. Place two or more emblems from different legions into a map device to gain access to the domain of timeless conflict. I'm not going to lie. I thought this was a not safe for work picture for a second, but her titties are indeed covered up. Oh, and this is another big thing. You can now, I don't know exactly how this is unlocked, but you can get a five a five-way map device now instead of a four-way one. I'm going to assume it's gated by like maybe the last boss or one of the uh, one of the bosses in general. And then here these are the splinters and then these were the actual emblems that you use. Okay. So this is a big one that I browsed very, very briefly, and this is going to be one that I can tell you from now, a lot of players are going to either really like or really dislike. I'm personally going to be on the one of, I really like this mechanic, I just hope that it gets fine-tuned if it needs it, you know? I'm going to stay on the positive side, so. Some Legion monsters display symbols indicating the specific items they drop, and you can actually see that if you watch the trailer again, you can see a little symbol on their head. Uh, skilled players will focus on freeing the monsters that maximize the type of rewards they are seeking. Certain monsters can drop incubation items, which modify a piece of equipment to guarantee a certain reward. Now, they say piece of equipment, they don't say weapon or armor, which means I'm guessing... 
I'm getting so these work for everything, right? There is no there there is no like only for weapon. It's just it just globally works for everything. So basically, this helps deterministic farming, uh, which is really good for SSF for private leagues for people who prefer limited trading. I'm personally kind of done with trade leagues. I'm not trying to be edgy. It's just I feel when you play trade leagues, people care way too much about efficiency, ignore so many parts of the core game, just try to maximize income every single league, ignore stuff, then buy the best stuff in the game. And that's not how I like to play Path of Exile. I like to play it like that for a little bit when it was a lot more slower paced, but now I would prefer to host like a private league, have 50 to 100 players, have a more condensed economy. You know, we can decide what is worth what because there's such few of us compared to you know the other players um so what this basically means is you can incubate an item so you basically for example you would take this and you would click it on your weapon and then whenever you kill 2000 monsters with it equipped it drops whatever it is right now it is random i don't think it's purely like you know drops a comb's heart after you kill 2000 monsters i don't know that much about it it seems here more like if you see adds a divination or adds an incubated divination card uh, that drops after 500 uh, this one is uh, drops after you know 5,000 so uh, one thing that I can tell already that's gonna be really good is that these are stackable you can see it's one out of a hundred which is good it's not like it's gonna clutter your inventory so if you're for example trying to farm unique chess pieces and you find one that's unique chess pieces you could just keep a stack in your inventory and anytime Anytime your incubation procs, I really hope it tells us. I hope it tells us like glove incubation has proc because you're going to have one on like every piece of armor. I don't know if that means accessory too. So you've got what like helmet, boots, gloves, maybe shield, main hand, body armor, um, and then what two rings plus amulet. I don't know if you can do those, but it is going to be a little bit to micromanage. Not nearly as bad as Legacy League. So that's one thing that I'm excited for. Um, and I know a lot of new players also don't realize this, but killing a thousand monsters can be done like that. Like, you, you run a double beyond map or a beyond high tier map, it's going to clear super fast. So that's the only thing is I'd like, I'd like to see if we need quality of life on them that it will be addressed, but we don't want it to be like just brain dead. Nobody wants brain dead content, right? Someone said, oh, there is an amulet right here. I'm blind, boys. <clears throat> Five, see, 5,000 is a great amount. I think 5,000 is solid because 5,000 is what? Like, probably like, I don't know, two to 500, no, maybe more, three to three to 500 mobs in like low tier white maps with very little rolls. So that's good. That's really good. Okay, so this is a big one. Uh, Legion Jewels, this is actually the number one reason why I'm not going to be playing solo self found and why I'm going to be playing a, a limited trade league as I've done in previous leagues. Um, so, Legion Jewels. From each of the five legions, it is possible to earn a specific unique jewel that can be socketed into your passive tree. Each of the five jewels modifies nearby passive skills in different ways, providing completely new character customization options if you are skilled enough to acquire one. So they've only showed one. Now, these are seeded. What it means by seeded is, I don't know if the values on the nodes themselves change or if the nodes themselves change based off of the seed. So basically, one of these drops, very rare I would imagine, right? You put it in here and it augments your, it completely changes your passive tree. You can see here, this is a different keystone. This is completely, this is all completely different. 100% completely different, right? All completely different. So if you're playing solo self-found and you really want to try out all of this stuff, Unless you're probably playing like 15 hours a day and you have a build that's able to do all of the end game content and you can successfully do the end game content, assuming you're in hardcore, I think this would just limit your customization a little bit. But playing in a trade league where, you know, you maybe have like 10, 15, 20 of them, you can swap them around, trade them with each other. So that's why I'm, I'm more so aiming towards this mode. So this is something that's really cool. Very, 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 very cool. I kind of dislike Watcher's Eye a little bit because I think Watcher's Eye is a little bit too niche um, because you just kill so many elders and maybe you'll get one that's usable, at least from my personal opinion. But this seems a bit more accessible because this is like, I don't know, I, I guess maybe to me it's just more of my, my style. Like I think this just looks a lot better than a Watcher's Eye, for example. So melee combat revamp, we specifically checked this one out already. We've addressed most of the core item, or core issues with melee combat in Path of Exile. You can now cancel attack animations after they deal their damage. Movement skills are now all instant. New low-level movement skills have been added for many classes. 
All melee attacks can now hit multiple adjacent enemies. The animation system has been overhauled. The monster targeting rules have improved. Accuracy is no longer capped at 95. Another nice change. There are more changes to melee combat than, po than there are possible to list here. But these changes plus a rebalance of most melee skills create an entirely new combat experience. The only thing I'm concerned about, it's not really a concern, it's just, you know, question is, I know they say they're like, you know, they have wind-ups on a lot of these bosses and stuff, but when you're doing ridiculous mapping and you're going through really quickly, and, you know, monsters have turbo, you've got a sextant with turbo, they're next to a haste, a haste shrine, which, are, <coughs> sorry, haste totem, which happens quite a lot, um, I expect that the combat changes don't really affect those bosses, which is okay because this is definitely a step in the right direction and i'm very 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 proud of grinding your games for for taking this initiative and actually hopefully making it you know making it work so new build archetypes this is something that's really cool as well on top of all the shit we've already gotten the new blood and sand uh gladiator which by the way i plan and this could change but i plan on playing an infernal blow Gladiator, Jug, or Berserker for League Start. I know it's Melee, I know, but it got me excited, man. What can I say? They're a great fucking company. Um, the new Blood and Sand Gladiator archetype can switch between Blood Stance and Sand Stance, dynamically modifying the function of new and existing skills. The new Rage Berserker archetype revamps the Rage system, introduces new skills that generate or consume Rage. These powerful archetypes and their new skills offer additional options for many other Path of Exile builds. So, Blood and Sand skills. Two new reservation effects let you switch between Blood and Sand stance. New and reworked skills have different behavior in each stance, like Blade Storm, which causes bleeding Blade Storms. Not sure how I feel about that bleed text there. I wonder for Deadeye, though, that'd be pretty cool because you get free bleed. Um, and Blinding Sandstorms and Sand stance. Blind is a great mechanic, though. Defensive and Mobility skills. Dash and Steel Skin let you instantly respond to dangerous enemy attacks by avoiding them or protecting you from damage. Rage Skills Two new attack skills that will let you easily generate Rage, a stacking buff that gives powerful attack bonuses and no longer has a downside. RF Zerker might be a thing? The Berserk, <clears throat> the Berserk skill will allow you to consume this Rage for a massive bonus. A new aura and support gems will further enhance this melee playstyle. So now one thing I'm concerned about is I really like the look of Dash. Steel Skin. Steel Skin, I'm assuming is a buff you click that you get insane mitigation for a short amount of time. My only problem with Steel Skin is a lot of times in Path of Exile, you die to on death effects. And if you knew that the on death effect would kill you, you wouldn't have stood there in the first place. And Path of Exile is in my opinion, completely littered with on-death effects all over the place. So hopefully, in my opinion, I'll just be sticking with dash to try to avoid them. You know, like, you'll kill the boss and just dash away instantly to prevent the DD from hitting you. Or you kill the pack, you see bears, you dash away instantly. You hear lightning mirage, you dash away. So th this is kind of what I'm gonna, what I'm gonna use it for. I don't really think I'm gonna be using steel skin, just literally because of those on-death effects is what I'm concerned about. If I'm playing a melee build with few hotkeys, maybe I can use both of them, which is great. So, early game monster rebalance. So this is something we checked out. With all the melee combat improvements, players can now dodge out of the way of attacks easily. We have taken advantage of this by rebalancing monster attacks that used to have poor signaling to now have a windup. This rebalance extends to improving monster AI and boss fights throughout the early campaign. Oh yeah, for level for leveling, I'm sure Steel Skin is gonna be great. Like because because for example, like Katava or you know Katava has the the boom boom or like you see the hand coming. A lot of those Our mechanics, it's perfect returns. for it. Perfect. Welcome but also Dash could be used for that as well. Hey there, P O H X. Hey Chicky Boo, thanks for the nine month, dude. Okay, powerful new items, and this is pretty much all we got. Alongside 14 new divination cards, Path of Exile's Legion contains 12 new unique items for you to discover. In addition, we have chosen 15 existing uniques that have been themed around Legion's five armies and rebalanced them so that have become powerful rewards to find in the new league. Now, I've watched a little bit of Ziggy's video, just, just a glance, and I actually believe, I could be wrong, but I think I heard him say that these items that are rebalanced, or some of them, 
are not on the normal unique drop table anymore. They've been moved to the Legion drop table of their own specific faction or whatever you'd like to call it, which is cool because that eliminates, sh you know, that's just one shit unique that you remove out of the pool, um, which makes it, you know, a better chance of you maybe finding what you want. Just, you know, small quality of life, but again, a great change that sets up a better future for Path of Exile. Instead of getting littered with more uniques, they are learning how to put them into different things. Like for example, they're they're locking them behind like league specific content, right? Which is cool because a lot of a lot of old league unique items are build enabling, like Harbinger items, uh, Breach items, uh, even Temp Tempest. I don't know, like Jorhas Hammer for animate weapon. There's a lot of uh, Vol's Talisman or Vol's Devotion. That's something that's really nice. So we've got a, a Elder Bone Helmet. I actually really like divination cards that give Elder and Shaper pieces because it eliminates a lot of RNG. So that's something that's really nice. Uh, 10 times Exalted Orb. I don't really have much of a comment to say about that. I don't think I'd ever make that. <laughs> um, Akuna's Will. This is a very unique item. So what this does is it makes it so Ray Zombie does not require a corpse and your Ray Zombies count as corpses which means you can have Summon Zombie with Montregul. So Montregul like doubles their life and then you have Akuna's Will and you can detonate dead on your zombies or you could body swap to them. I don't know how that works with minion instability. The other thing that's kind of spooky is if you are doing a breach and Bayman spawns and he does Vol DD, what happens? Do you die? Do you take like, like 700k fire damage because your zombies are there? I mean, you could kind of move them away, but if you accidentally hit Convocation, you pretty much just killed yourself. However, even though there's a lot of silly shenanigans, you could look at this from a hardcore perspective, right? You make a care, you make a summoner. You, you go through, you destroy all content in the game. You're now doing, you know, uh, Shaper and Uber Elder and Guardians and things like that. So you make another build, right? Which is totally normal. People make more than one build. And you, you know, you clear through, you, you get a Shaper set. You switch to your summoner that uses Akuna's Will. And when you're doing Shaper, you don't really have to worry about that in a dead. So that just gives you your normal build with no downside. Or if you're doing things like Adziri, Uber Adziri, Uber Elder, you know, like you can, don't forget that in Path of Exile, you're not supposed to just play one build to do all content, especially if you're playing hardcore. You need to, you need to take a look at the pros and cons of builds and really make use of them. I'm not saying you need to make a different build for everything you do, but again, pros and cons of everything. It's very important in the game. <clears throat> Ma of Conquest. This is unaffected by poison, plus the life. 13% of damage taken gained is life. That's a unique one. Inner Conviction. Lavinia's Wisdom. This is a little turd weapon. I remember using this for Righteous Fire when we, when we were like leveling. This now gives a huge boost to life and mana. Actually has, I don't know if that fizz damage roll was always there. Has uh, area of effect and area damage. Like better, I think just better rolls overall. And then Wrath Pith now has sacrifice a percentage of your life when you use a trigger or a spell skill. Increased critical strike chance per spells. That's unique. Pretty unique. And then we've got the Legion supporter pack. So overall, I gotta say I'm pretty excited. This is probably my most, my most anticipated league in the last time that I can remember, I'm not gonna lie, not even just for the league mechanic, but just because of the the actual change to the core game. So, you know, I'm I'm very excited. I'm I'm really, really, really fucking excited. Uh, I have not been excited for Path of Exile like this, like I said, in a long time. I've always really enjoyed the game. It's just, you know, as you play a game for six, seven, eight years, it just loses its excitement. But GDG is really good at this, and they just know how to bring those veteran players back. So. You know super excited and we don't even have the patch notes yet right like we don't even have we just have this so i'm going to be playing uh just for you guys i know i said this earlier but to just do a quick recap i'm most likely 98 percent chance be playing a hardcore private league on the hardcore private league i don't know exactly what we're doing i'm not adding damage mods i'm not making the game more difficult i'm simply doing it to enforce limited trading so i'll probably allow unique item trading and that's probably about it um, you know, you can still map together, but it's basically going to be solo self found with unique item trading. That's, that's pretty much what we've come down to at the moment, because I want to be able to play with people, but at the same time, I want to be able to play by myself. And I also, if I want to make a build off an item that's really cool that I never get, I want to be able to trade for it unique for unique, right? No currency trading, 
The idea of crafting your own gear is kind of what keeps me playing Path of Exile as well. So that's that's most likely where it's going to go towards. Anyway, I hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourself. Hope you guys enjoyed this analysis video. I tried really hard for it. Um, you know, and if you liked it, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, you can catch me streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. See you guys all tomorrow. Take care, everyone.